So, uh, this is a little word problem that I came up with some of my or for some of my students. Um, not to drop a dime, but I, I kind of modeled this after the Kohl's price structure. Love the quality of the stuff. I hate shopping there because their price structure is so god-awful that I can't figure it out right off the top of my head, and that pisses me off. Anyway, <laughs> so... I'm sure I'm going to get some flack. Um, anywho, so here we go. Uh, suppose you're wanting to buy some shoes. And you've got a couple of different options. Um, it's not uncommon for for stores to offer things like, you know, 30% off, 20% off, uh, $10 off, that sort of mess. So we're going to check out um, a couple of different types of sales. One, we have this $10 coupon we can use, but it's got to be off a regularly priced item. And then we also have a coupon for 30% uh, off any regular or sale price item. Uh, I'm telling you right now, every single store that would offer anything like this is going to go $10 off, then 30% off. There's a reason behind it. I'll let you figure that one out. Uh, the second option is that the shoes are already 20% off on sale, but because they're on sale, we can't use our $10 off. Um, so we can go ahead and use an addition, that, that additional 30% coupon. So the question is, which one of these two things is the better option? And to start, I give you that the shoes are $80. So I'm going to, uh, to do this first, and then I'm going to change up the numbers a little bit, and I'm going to show you how we can find the break-even point. Here we go. Remember, it's just math. We don't even care that they're shoes. So first, first scenario, I have $80. I subtract off the $10. That gives me $70. I then have to subtract off 30% of that because I have a 30% off. So it's 0 0.3 times 70. What this is going to do is it's going to give you 70 minus, and then 3 times 7 is 21, and then we move the, the decimal over. So, well, 10% would be 7, and so if we multiply that by 3, we get 21, so minus 21. So this is going to give us $49. So if we take $10 off and then our 30%, we get $49. Uh, if we go with the 80%, I'm sorry, if we, if we go back and we, and we take off 20%, so that's 20% of 80. All right, well, 10% of 80 is 8. You just move the decimal place. And then so 20% would be twice, that'd be 16. So this is going, going to be um, 80 minus 16, which is 64. But then we have to subtract off 30% of that. This is not quite as simple to do, uh, at least not in your head necessarily. 10% um, of 64 is 6.4 times 3 is 19.2. So this is really going to be 64 minus $19.20. Uh, and so this is going to be uh, minus 20, so 44 plus 80 cents. So this is going to be 4480. So right now, it's looking like if you take the 20% off and then apply your 30%, that's cool. All right, so now if you were to lower this price to say like $40, it would actually be better if you ran the $10 off than the 30% off. The question, where is that break even point? So here's a similar situation. Similar. Um, $5 off. then 20% or 10% off then 20% and then we're going to find out well where's this break even point so just like before we're going to kind of build it in steps if you see here i first did, i did that first step and got an answer then i went and i subtracted off the next discount I'm going to do this exact same thing here, but 
instead of getting an answer, I'm just going to put parentheses around it because that means get the answer first. So for this first set here, what is my original price? I have no idea. So the fun part of this is, and I usually I usually teach this right around Valentine's Day for some reason, but so we're doing word problems, and we get to this question of like, well, what's the original price? And it's three little words every mathematician loves to hear. It's not I love you, but I thank you for thinking of it. It's I don't know. <laughs> so it sounds stupid, but if I don't know, it's X. There. That's all. That's it. It's an unknown value. What, do you, what is it? I don't know. So we'll just call it X. What, could I call it Y? Sure. Could you could it call it B? Absolutely. I just chose X because why not? Uh, anyway, so we're going to go through this exact process that we did up here, just in a, in a different sense. And we're going to do it here, but with this unknown magical price. So if you were to take this exact problem and instead of 80, you just put X, you have the exact situation we're going to test. Here we go. First, I start with my original price. Then I subtract $5. I need that answer. So I get an answer. Then I take off 20% of what's left. So I subtract off 20% of what's left. But what's left? That. So this right here, this equation, it, or I'm sorry, this expression, we haven't given an equation yet, but we will, don't worry, we will. Uh, this expression here describes the final price of the $5 off, then the 20% off. Take $5, then take 20% of what's left. Just like up here, we took $10, then we took 30% of what was left. Same exact process. All right, second one here. Do this one in, in yellow. I start off with my original price, and then I take 10% off of that. I need that answer. Then I'm going to take 20% off of what's left. But what's left is this answer. So x minus 0.1x. That's going to give me my 10% cost or my 10% then 20% discount. I want to know when are these two sales the same? So to say same in math, we set them equal. Therefore, x minus 5 minus 0 0.2 x minus 5. If you need to, go back and review what each of these things stand for. I will explain it at the end of this equation because we just simply have to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. 1x minus 0 0.2 x minus 0 0.1 all right, so this piece here is $5 off. This piece here, to include the sign, so I should probably include that, is 20% off after. The after comes from this x minus 5. And so we're asking, when is that the same? That's what the equal sign is doing. Over on the other side, 
we are taking 10% off. Then 20% off after. So we needed that answer to figure it out. So our equation reads true. We want to know when these two sales will be equal. We just had to confirm that we are in fact getting the same sale back. All right, so I'm going to rewrite and then we're just going to solve it. I'll give you a hint on how to solve these things. Okay. Now, I would recommend that you start on the inside here. That would be where I would start. Just simply because you can combine like terms. So I'm gonna work this problem slightly differently than I normally teach it, but the first part is to distribute. So we're gonna distribute like this whole piece. We're gonna distribute that to both. This whole piece, we're gonna distribute that to both. The next piece is going to be to combine like terms. That is the worst IK ever. <laughs> wow. We're going to Lee Ice. Lee Ice? Sure, let's do that. Like. Combine like terms. So anything that shares the same variable with the same exponent, we are going to combine those. Three. We are going to move things around. Now, we're going to move things in such a way that all of the variable terms go to one side. It doesn't matter which side. Most people like the left. It does not matter. So we're going to move everything to all the variables to one side, all of the hard numbers, that was those constants, to the other side. And we're going to do so using addition and subtraction. And then finally, we are going to solve using multiplication and division. So here we go. Like I said before, I would recommend, it's not required, but I would recommend combining these like terms before distributing because it's going to make the distribution easier. So I'm gonna take a, a step and I'm gonna do that. This is going to be x minus five over here, minus 0 0.2 x minus five equals 0 0.9 x minus 0 0.2 times 0 0.9x. All right, so distribute. I take this whole piece to include its sign and I multiply it through. I take this whole piece to include its sign and I multiply it through. When you distribute, you give a little bit to everybody. So it's just like a distribution center for like a Walmart or a Kmart, that sort of thing where you're, you're just passing out to everybody. When later on, when you learn about factoring, that's recall. You're grabbing every, the same thing from everybody that you just handed out. All right, so let's finish this up here. Now, we didn't touch this x minus 5 here. There is a 1. So if you don't see it in front of the thing, it's, a, it's an imaginary 1. We can distribute that through. But 1 times anything is just that anything. So we just get x minus 5 back. Negative 0.2 times a positive one gives us a negative 0.2x. Negative 0.2 times negative five gives us a positive one. 0.9x stays the same. Negative 0.2 times positive 0.9 gives us a negative 0.18x. This is that distribution. combine like terms. I tend to circle my terms that are the same to include the sign in front. Now when you do these combining of like terms, you're just doing them on either side, on, you know, pick one side to start with, but you're doing them on each side separately. So you're not moving anything yet, you're just combining. I have x minus 0.2x gives me 0.8x. And then I have this negative five and this positive one I'm going to cross these out because I've already counted on them. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. 
Okay, so those are done. Over here, I just have 0.9x minus 0.18x. So 90 minus 18 is 72. So this is going to be 0.72x. Now, move things around. I do have a particular way that I do it, but it's not necessary. I will always do it, if I, if I have a choice, I will always do it in such a way that the coefficient in front of x will be positive when I'm done. That, that's a me thing. It's not a requirement, it's just a me thing. So I notice that if I were to think of 0.8 as 80 and 0.72 as 72, I could subtract 72 from 80 and still be positive. So I'm going to choose, and I'm gonna, I know somebody in the comments is going to be like, but you could have saved a step. Yeah, but I can sense inequalities coming, and this will save me in inequalities. I'll take the extra step so that I don't have to screw up signs. I'm going to subtract off that whole term, all of it. Not just the number in front, but the whole term goes. So minus 0.72x. That's going to give me 0.08x is equal. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Minus 4 is equal to, and now anything subtracted from itself is 0. The equal sign does not go away. I'm still in the move phase, so I'm going to move now. I'm going to move this negative 4 away. To do that, I add 4 to both sides. The reason for that is I want to make this number 0. So 0.08x, these 0 out, giving me 4 on the other side. Finally, in yellow, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solve. Typically, you can just do this by dividing whatever's in front of x. So 0 0.08, and then divide that by 0 0.08. And now I have x divided by, ew, gross. Um, well, all right, fine. Apparently, I'm having a brain fart day. So 4 divided by 0 0.08 gives us 50. I thought it was, but I wasn't confident today. Okay, so what does that tell us? If we go back, let me shut this off for better and so If we go back and, and look at everything that we've done, the first thing it tells us is X. What was X? X was that original price. So when we found X down here, that was the original price. Now what was the situation? The situation was, when these two sales gave you the same price, meaning no, neither sale was better than the other. So when does that happen? When the original price is $50. So at $50, the two sales are the same. So whatever the cost is, I didn't even figure the cost. I have no idea what the sale price is. But no matter what it is, it's the same for each of these. That means that if you go on either side of 50, one of them will be better than the other. It kind of helps here because it can, it can give you that determination of when do I use which thing. And I suppose you could do this on every single piece and, and be like, okay, well, I'll just calculate it. That's fine. But if you don't know when that break-even point is, you might be missing a sale that's better at a different store. And some stores are famous for not giving you their original price or a false original price. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad, to be honest. Um, don't worry. If you don't want to do this, that's fine. Just know that there are people out there like me that do this basically to make money. Well, if I'm making money off of people's inability to, to check me, then essentially I'm, I'm, I'm using them. I don't want you to be used. I want you to be smarter than the person that's doing it. And it doesn't take a lot because they have to try to convince you where all you have to do is provide doubt. So it's much easier on your end. All right. This is very, very, very similar to the situation that my students are going to see in their project. Um, I hope this helps. I hope that you 
understand that you can use math in many, 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 many situations in everyday life. Most people just choose to not use the math. That's fine. Don't worry. Somebody else will be around to use it. All right. Enough on my soapbox. Good luck. Leave comments below. I appreciate your time.